I'm Kim Diener. I'm John Clark. I'm Barbara Gibbs. And I'm Big Weather. And when we're in town, we watch Lady, Lady J. J. Yeah, Jenkins, yeah, you're yeah, sick for yeah. this one, on, baby. baby. Uh, uh, yeah, what? Uh, come on. Lady J's montage is show to watch for the mom and the children and the pops. Give you life to the community. In the community, there'll be more unity. Sit back, relax, take a look. Give me 28 minutes and you'll be hooked. Lady J's montage. Lady J, what? Lady J, huh? Lady J, what? Lady J, what? Uh, uh, uh. Lady J's montage is show to watch for your mom and the children and the pops. Giving life to the community. In the community, there'll be more unity. Sit back, relax, take a look. Give me 28 minutes and you'll be hooked. Lady J's montage. Lady J, let's go! What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Lady J. And I am with the phenomenal, world-renowned, Best chef ever? Yes, sir. <laughs> wow. Chef Jerome Brown. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been quite a few years. Yeah, huh? but About you've been doing years. some great things. Ten years? Yes, yeah, sir. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been fortunate traveling the world, still stirring these pots. Okay, all yeah. right. And I know you stirred up something good. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So tell me about some of the places you've been. Oh, but I really want to know, how did you select your career and how did you get into cooking and so forth? Well, you know, I, I, I tell people, because I started so young at the age of seven, I tell people it's the gift God gave me. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, that's the only thing I could really attribute to the passion that I had for. Um, it kind of came natural. My father was a chef. My mother was a dietitian. Mm -hmm. All the men in my family cooked. So it really was, or is, rather, uh, embedded in me, some okay. of the genes. All right. Yeah. So did you have a college education with this, a culinary school? Or? Well, so I went in the U.S. Army. Oh, okay. I didn't become a chef in the, by the traditional means of going to culinary school. And my, my gift was cultivated through the U.S. Army. I went in as a cook. Mm -hmm. but a lot of people didn't know I was in the uh, U.S. Army. But I went in as a cook. Mm -hmm. I got certified as a chef in 1988 while I was stationed in Korea. Okay, yeah. all right. So what kind of meals did you pick, did you select during that time? Well, well, during that time, it's, it's the military, so mm -hmm. we did a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I love about that time of my life is that uh, we, we, we did something for everyone because it's such a melting pot mm -hmm. of people from all over the world. And, you know, so it gave me that experience of learning different cuisines and mm -hmm. different approach and approach to cooking and, mm -hmm. and so on. So it really actually made me a well-rounded chef. Mm -hmm. You know, that and apprenticing under different executive chefs around the world that really kind of gave me the development that I needed to be who I am now. Okay, so you, you're an international culinary chef. Right. What are some places that you've been and what are some of your favorite uh, international dishes? Wow. So you know, it's, a, it's amazing. I've been to Dubai a, a few times. Mm. Uh, I went to Nairobi uh, twice last year. And um, and I love the Ugali. The Ugali fries were amazing. Can you make them now? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Tell me, let's pause for a moment. Tell me how you can make those. Not that I'm going to. <laughs> I will come to you and ask you to do it. So you have to have the Ugali mix. Okay. Right? It's a mix. It looks, you know, it's, it looks like a big white bowl of clay to tell you the truth but okay. what we do is we take that ugali once we get it made up and we shape it into fries and batter it and deep fry it okay amazing okay amazing so that's not dietary um if i'm on my keto or whatever this that doesn't fit in with no, that you might want to stay away from that <laughs> what about desserts i love desserts um i'm not a pastry chef but I love desserts. We here at the Rocky Mountain Event Center, we have an amazing pastry chef, Chef Portia. Uh, we oftentimes collaborate on different things that uh, something that you'll try to do later on. Okay. And um, and just kind of see what it is that uh, we can come up with. But yeah, I'm a dessert guy. Okay. Yeah, I All love right. to eat them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's nothing you can't cook. Has there any been anything that you wanted to cook but you haven't tried yet, or someone? requested and you weren't really sure about it? Uh, you know what, I, I tell you, um, a short story that changed my life forever. Um, for a short period of time I was Bishop Eddie Long's chef 
And as I was coming up to the end of that contract, Bernice King. Dr. King's daughter? Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. At that time, uh, she explained to me that her mom was vegan mm -hmm. and that uh, they were looking for someone who can prepare vegan food. And at the time, I was not versed in vegan food prep. Mm -hmm. and, and so as a result, I mean, that, come on, that's Coretta Scott King. I wasn't going to play with it. <laughs> I wasn't going to experiment. Exactly. I just, you know, simply passed on that. Mm -hmm. But what it made me do was go back and learn mm -hmm. what I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And that made me a, ultimately a better chef. Mm -hmm. So that, that what seemed like a missed opportunity turned out to be a very valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. A learning opportunity. Absolutely. And it helped you grow absolutely. as well. Because it, it built up your database, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. But, I, but I definitely regret not being able to cook for the magnificent Coretta, Coretta Scott King. You got that request though, you can put that on your resume. Yeah, I can. <laughs> okay, so tell me about any other celebrities you um, cook for. Well, as you know, I've, I've built my career on cooking for celebrities. Mm -hmm. They start calling me the chef to the stars. And I told you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, from, you know, George Bush uh, Jr., I call him George, uh, George W. Mm -hmm. George W. Bush, I cook for him and his wife. I also cook for the Obamas, for, this, for the Global Peace Inaugural Ball. Mm. Um, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, I was his personal chef. And, Are you um, kidding me? No. What, no. Does, what does he eat? What did you cook for him? Because he is huge. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, but you know what? We probably eat more than he does. Really? Yeah. He's very... How is that? Explain that. Well, well, you know, at that time, you have to remember, at that time, he was playing. He's not playing oh, now. Oh, okay. And okay. he has a, an amazing chef now, Chef Alex Conant. Mm -hmm. um, but during that time I was there, Shaquille was very uh, strict mm -hmm. in his diet. Very mm -hmm. strict to his approach. It was very calculated so that he could perform at his optimal level mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. his playing time. So, for, for example, for lunch, you know, we would have something very lean, like a, a, a baked chicken leg quarter mm -hmm. or, or seafood and fish, and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, always fresh fruit, always fresh veggies mm -hmm. and, and so on. And uh, so, he, I mean, he had a variety. Wow. He had a variety just like anybody else. Wow. Yeah. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. I would like to taste something that you have made or developed. Yeah? Yeah. You. I want a first hand so I can tell you all about it because I know this guy <laughs> is serious. Oh my gosh. Okay, so before that happens though, tell me all about your new position at the Rocky Mount Event Center. Well, so um, th first of all, you know, for those of you who haven't come to this building here in downtown Rocky Mount, the Rocky Mount Event Center is an amazing facility and there's not many places like it in the United States especially at this size and this size of community. Um, it was designed for uh, a place for the youth to be able to come and play, mm -hmm. come and have a safe environment. And, mm -hmm. But we also host concerts and gymnastics tournaments and, and um, volleyball and basketball. We have uh, banquets. Uh, okay. So I am the executive chef here over uh, food and beverage. Mm -hmm. And um, it's my job to make sure that the guests have a pleasant experience and they get the same cuisine that we would give to Shaquille O'Neal or anyone else. Oh. We give worldwide cuisine. Okay. So it's not just uh, Eastern Carolina barbecue, mm -hmm. it's so much more than that. Okay, so is there a particular menu for uh, people to select from or is it just a standard package or yeah, how does that happen? So no standard anything. We have a, a large selection of different menus mm -hmm. to choose from and as well as I customize um, oftentimes a customizing menu. Mm. So I want to give you something that we don't necessarily have, uh, particularly from our chef's table. Mm -hmm. You know, you get five star everything. Oh my gosh. You know? So can you sample if you came up with a menu or something you wanted to try, could could you make that Absolutely. and then I could sample it? Absolutely. So actually today, right before you arrived, mm -hmm. we had just finished the tasting. Okay. Just finished I the tasting. It. it was let me see, it was champagne chicken, it was bourbon what? bourbon mashed yams, it was bourbon. Wait a minute. Real bourbon? Yes. I'm a I'm not a drinker, so um 
I don't really know. Does it cook off? In the, yeah, it does. Yeah. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we get it in. Okay, I see. I Not see. on the clock. I see. But, yeah, so we, we, we give you real world-class cuisine. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and we make sure that, of course, the alcohol cooks out. Okay. So they're not gonna get a DUI. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I can I can handle that. If they get a DUI, you know, that don't. means they got started before they came. Right. But you know, <laughs> exactly. Because right. someone who doesn't, would right, I right, pick right. up on it or would I not no, taste it? No. 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 You won't have any effect. Okay. You get the taste, but not the effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? So no. Okay. The, the alcohol actually burns off. Okay. Yeah. What about casseroles and what's your specialty? What did you like to make the most? That's tough. You know, that's like asking a mom who's a favorite child, <laughs> oh, right? Oh boy, you don't do that. Right, right, right. I don't know. I, I, I get a lot of requests for different things. So it's really about the individuals. Mm -hmm. It's really about um, that favorite thing, you know, with, with, with different, celebra different celebrities that I cook for, mm -hmm. every last one of them have their, like, their favorite thing mm -hmm. or that thing they can eat every day. Mm -hmm. and, and really, you know, being in a banquet facility, you're accommodating the palate of whoever that client is. Exactly. So it varies. So mm -hmm. there's no one specific thing. But my specialties, I don't know. They, they range from so many different things from my oxtails. Oh, so, wait. Hold it. Oxtails. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to buy some yeah. of those. I love oxtails. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My lobster pancakes. <laughs> yeah, Stop. We, yeah, Are you serious? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that. Lobster pancakes and I, I, may, I finish them with a warm apricot sauce. Not okay. serious. No. Okay, let's it's just amazing. stop. This is not fair. You know, I haven't had my dinner <laughs> and you're tempting me. You don't have any samples of that. So we'll just <laughs> stop it right there. Okay, okay. All right. So um, let's keep it going. You, yeah. you tell me all about what you do and even more because this is fabulous. You know, um, have you ever thought about having a cooking show? You know, they have, they have so many cooking shows now. <laughs> it seems like it went from none to many. Right. Well, I mean, society has changed and people have become so much more educated mm -hmm. than with the success of the Food Network, the Food Channel, and uh, Bravo's Top Chef, and so many other outlets, Discovery. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those different networks have really, um, I, I credit with educating society. Yes. Educating society on food and how to, uh, and different approaches to food, mm -hmm. uh, different ideas. I know people that have said that they literally turn on the television to get an idea of what they want to cook for that night, mm. right? So uh, I guess they're sitting up at work watching the Food Network. But they but should be reading your my what? cookbooks. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> That's eat like a celebrity. Mm -hmm. Southern cuisine with a gourmet twist and Carolina soul, featuring the down home taste of the Carolinas. Oh. So uh, yeah, you have two options there, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about writing another one. I don't know. Sure. We'll see. We'll see. Wow. But, uh, yeah, but both of those books are available on Amazon. Because uh, somebody like me cook from your cookbook. Absolutely. Because I'm not a chef. Absolutely. I could do some things well, but absolutely. I know I, I just really want to try those lobster pancakes. Well, my my books are you know are geared towards not only educating you but building your pantry. Okay. As well as giving you some great ideas, mm -hmm. uh, things that you could prepare. Uh, regardless of what it is you like, I have a little bit of everything for everyone. Do you start everything from scratch, or do you Absolutely. take something that's already made and then you add to it? To uh, actually, I do give both. It a kick? I do both. <clears throat> I do both. Um, for the most part, I don't cook anything out of a can. Okay. Right. I, I um, pride myself on the fact that I use fresh vegetables, mm -hmm. and, um, good, great cuts of meats, and. You know, if I'm cooking with wine, it's a wine that I actually would drink, mm -hmm. not something cheap, you know okay. what I mean? Okay. But, um, you know, I like to feed people the way that I like to cook. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I'm known as an international chef, then guess what? You're going to have options from Come me. with or, it, that's, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just think that's important um, to give people what it is that you want them to have. Mm -hmm. and, and what you want them to have should be reflective of the skill set and uh, yeah. Okay. That thing that makes me who I am. Oh yeah. You definitely are an original. Have and to I be. admire that. Have to be. So I would like to know um, what is the biggest event that you have uh, cooked for? 
Walt Disney World, uh, when I was an area chef at the Contemporary Resort for Walt Disney World, it was the... Is that in California? No, that's, 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 in, the, that's in Orlando. So okay. Disneyland is California, okay. Disney World is Florida. Okay. Uh, so I was at Disney World, mm -hmm. and uh, we it was grand opening of Animal Kingdom and the merger of McDonald's fries. Oh. And uh, and and so we had we literally had a month to prepare, but we cooked for ten thousand people. Wow. How do you do that? I mean, do they give you a, a lot of a selective number? Uh, to prepare for, or you just cook a whole lot of stuff and say, Listen, hopefully it'll be gone by one tomorrow. Of, <laughs> one of the things that Walt Disney World is so phenomenal at is uh, prep mm -hmm. and and research and follow up and planning, great planning, um, and and that's one of those companies I'm, I'm grateful for that experience because it taught me to leave no stones unturned, mm -hmm. right? When you're planning a menu, all things are taken into consideration. Hearing ideas, thinking outside of the box, you know, being creative and really listening to the client and giving the client the experience above and beyond what they ask for. Mm -hmm. And I live by that. I always say that great service is long remembered after a good meal. So the service is equally important. Mm -hmm. People will always remember how you treated them. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it goes a long way absolutely. in a lot of different subject areas. Right. And yes. so to be able to cook for ten thousand people, a group of chefs of course, mm -hmm. I mean that came that that had to come with all of those different mm -hmm. characteristics that I just spoke of. Okay. And so you're the executive chef here at the Rocky Mountain Event Center. Correct. Is okay, so do you theater? have a team? Yeah, absolutely. That you Absolutely, we have an amazing team, mm -hmm. and um, these people have been phenomenal. They make me look good, <laughs> right? And um, and I'm I'm grateful for the team that I have. I mean, you know, from Chef William, who you met, mm -hmm. uh, Chef Kelly, who's out on maternity leave, and and so on. I mean, the entire team, they're just phenomenal. And then our wait staff. Our wait staff is the reason why people come back. Yes. You know, um, again, great service. Mm -hmm. You know, the food is going to be all right. But if you take it out there and you get bad service, you still going to lose it. It spoils business. everything. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for our wait staff and all. So, yeah, no complaints. Okay, well, in just a moment, I'm going to taste something delicious in here. It won't be the lobster pancakes. I'm still drawing those hints and trying to get that in there <laughs> some kind of way. But hold on just a moment and we will have a treat. See this? You want some? We're just going to tell you about it. Of course, you can't have any. Okay, you tell them all about this caramel corn. So, Chef Portia is our pastry chef here. Mm. And um, oh my gosh. one of the things that they and they laugh at me, they talk about me, but it helps my food cost. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't get rid of anything that can be utilized in a different way. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'll pop way too much popcorn. And so we'll turn around and say, you know what, Portia? Let's take this popcorn and make our own caramel popcorn. They have the peanuts. It's our own version of Crunch and Munch. <laughs> okay, but I think that is a has a little more caramel in it yeah. than what I'm used to. So it makes it crunchy, but then it it savors out the flavor just a little bit more. Exactly. Well, this this here, so we use chopped peanuts uh -huh. in it instead of the halves. Mm -hmm. um, but I like them both. But with this, we took this, we made our own homemade caramel, or portion mm. of it, and you know, just kind of tossed the nuts in, and then we let it sit in the oven and. and Sit in the oven. Yeah, and let it just oh. soak in. Let See? it just soak in. But this is it's delicious. I it like is. it. I have to keep the staff's hands out of it. <laughs> uh, so we can't sell this batch, so we're just gonna eat it. Oh yeah, but, we uh, we <laughs> gonna eat it. You know, I'm trying not to get it in my teeth because you know I'm on TV right now. But um, it is absolutely delicious. It's good. Yeah, it's good. So I want you to look in the camera, and I want you to tell everybody. Who was your inspiration? Who was someone who inspired you? You know, I, I pull uh, my inspiration from my parents mm. and my uncles. I have an uncle, Uncle 
Jimmy. That man cook. Mm -hmm. Everything he touch. I don't care what it is, if it's a can of peas. It's just something about it. And I think it's the love. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Because you can taste and tell when someone intentionally did something. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what it is. If it's someone's work in another genre, you can tell when they have a passion for what it, for what they do. Mm -hmm. And just growing up, coming down to North Carolina in the summertime and having his food or my grandmother's biscuits and I mean, my inspiration is, it just comes from all over the place. Okay, you say your grandmother's biscuits. So, yeah. you know, I just saw Martin this past weekend and he used to have a, and his mother <laughs> and my mama biscuits. Okay. <laughs> so, were they buttermilk biscuits? So, I mean, from yeah. scratch. Yeah, from See, scratch. I just, I wish I could be that creative, but I, yeah. I have to pop open the, the can, you know. Listen, no. Listen. Oh, do you do cooking lessons? Think about it. I, I know, would be I your used to have favorite the time. student. <laughs> I used to have the time. Now I've gotten so busy that I don't really have, and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I definitely enjoy it, but you really have to get on the schedule early. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I'll do it for you. Okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I'm going to take you up on it. All right. And I just want to thank you for being on Lady J's Montage. You got it. And I'm going to gain a little weight because I'm going to eat this popcorn. You're not going to put that on me. <laughs> <laughs> I can write one book, maybe I can write two books, then three books, then four books. Listen to me, there ain't nothing you can't do. When you handle your business, money will come and chase you. But you gotta be the best person you can be so that you can even be trusted with money and wealth. So I don't know about your background, because the last school I went to, let me just ask you here, I just wanna know. All right, just, just by a show of hands, okay? If, you're, if your father's not in your life, or your parents have gone through divorce, and, the, and there's issues at home, or your father's not in your life, and you come from somewhat of a broken home, can you just raise your hand real quick? Like, that's a problem. But you know what, though? Don't be discouraged. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I say don't be discouraged. I heard about this young girl named Simone Biles. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I found out about Simone Biles. Not only is she flipping and tumbling and doing all these amazing things, I'm thinking like, man, her mom and dad must have had her training when she was like three or four, and they was like, actually, no, her mom and dad's not in her life. Oh yeah, prison, drug addiction, yep, she was adopted. Her grandparents stepped in and said, okay, we'll take you under our wings, and they nurtured her and they grew her, and now she got gold all around her neck. But, I, but I'm thinking, like, this is weird, though. Like, she didn't come from a family of gymnasts. She came from a family of drug and, uh, and, and alcohol abuse, like people who were struggling, like prison. Like, she came, how do you come from that but you winning gold medals representing your country? Because she was willing to put the work in. That's the problem with our country today. We got a bunch of people that's either out for greed, me, 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 or we're just here being average. You were not born to be average. There ain't nothing special about her. She's human. She put the work in. When everybody went to the prom, she said, no, thank you. I promise you. I saw the interview. How was your prom? Oh, I heard it was nice. They say, what do you mean you heard it was nice? She was like, yeah, my friends went and I saw the pictures on IG. I was so excited for them. They said, Simone Biles, like, you're like a celebrity, like everybody at the school knows you. Like, you didn't go to the prom? She was like, oh no, I was training. They said, huh? She said, yeah, I, I mean, I was training. The prom is really cool. I might go next year, but I'm focused on the Olympics right now. And watch this. All those people that was at the prom, that was getting, you know what I'm saying? Everything they out there doing. Watch this, a few weeks ago, they was watching her on TV. Are you willing to put in the work to go to that next level? That's one thing I can say about our country. You can make it here. Some people, be, really believe it or not, some people, because of their situation, because of their upbringing, because of their environment, some people will have a harder time. Let's just be clear. Some of you grew up in households where things will be a little bit easier for you. Some of you come from backgrounds where things will be a little bit harder. You know what I'm saying? But hey, that's what makes us, us who we are. That's what makes the great great. Don't nobody just all of a sudden just blow up and get to that next level. You deal with adversity and you keep pushing. You see, I saw that the guy that owns WhatsApp, that just sold WhatsApp to Facebook a few years ago for $19 billion, that's a lot of money. Did you know that several years before he went to Facebook, and Facebook was like, yeah, no thank you. 
<laughs> my man went to Facebook trying to get a job. I'm like, yo, let me tell you about this joint called WhatsApp. They was like, nah, we good. WhatsApp, what's that? That's what they said to him. And he walked out of there like, man, that, man, that hurt. But like David said, that wasn't no failure. He was like, all right, well, I guess I got to just do it myself. And then years later, Facebook went to him. Hey, man, come back. Come on, talk. Let's talk. I can imagine them on the golf course at a country club. And, and you know, in the office, sitting down with that big old shiny oak table with all their attorneys, and they finally sell it for $19 billion. Why? Because he said, I got a dream. But people don't buy dreams, people buy realities. So he said, What I'm gonna do now, since don't nobody believe in my dream, I'm gonna pursue it. I'm going to press on, I'm going to grind, I'm going to put in the work, I'm going to put in the sacrifice because I know that I've been given this dream, this vision, I'm going to do what I can to make this thing come into fruition and when it does, people buy reality. So if somebody don't believe in you, don't be discouraged. I can only imagine when Simone Biles was going to gym practice and you know what I'm saying and she walked into the gym and people are flipping and they're there with their moms and dads. I'm sure she felt bad like man my mom and dad are here and they're looking like are those your parents? She's like no they're, they're my grandparents. Well where are your parents at? I'm sure she had these conversations and she was like you know what I'm not going to let my condition be my conclusion. I'm not going to let that be my story. Here's the reality. She got the same DNA inside her mom and dad but she also has a brain. And the way we've been created and designed, we have brains, we can make our own decisions. You choose every single day whether or not you want to be successful or whether or not you want to be a failure. And it starts with a small thing.